All right, what's up, everyone? It's probably a brand. Not doing a stream today, just doing a few minute video. Uh, like I said, it's not necessarily stream worthy, but just an observation, right? So, and yeah, sorry about the background. Uh, not everything is set up. So, once again, just a quick video. But with Hex on day 351, which was November 19th, we had what was called the big payday. And right up into that, there was like a 24 hour window that you could stake and qualify for the big payday. Anyways, the origin address, uh, the main contract address that, you know, is Hex and the entity that's the OA, uh, it and like pretty much every other address had staked to like a 99% ratio. And long story short, we fast forward into PulseChain.com and uh, today, the, the final day, um, the OA has sacrificed uh, for Pulse. And so I think that this is uh, amazing, right? It's amazing because if there's anything we've ever learned from all the clips that I've made of Richard Hart, it's that, you know, decentralization works great in consensus networks, but not when it comes to economic mass. Uh, I mean, you look at things like Bitcoin, it's got a Bitcoin rich list. You look at things like Ethereum, you know, all these uh, options and examples that Richard Hart gives about financial centralization, Amazon, stuff like this. So my point is, is that with Pulse, a lot of people, myself included, we're a little bit curious, right? Oh, you know, you're going to keep 1% to fuck off and do whatever you want with, right? And you're going to have 2.5% inflation, 2.5% of the supply inflated due to the uh, liquidity pools that, that they're going to be readjusting. But, you know, I kept wondering, like, when's the OA going to come on in? So... Let's, uh, let's just take a look at the screen right quick. And uh, this is something that I've had on my tab for, whoops, not this one. Let me, sorry about this. Let me go back real quick. Let me go back another, just a couple. Okay. We're going to go to the main. I was just looking at some addresses. Okay, so this is the actual main one right here, right? The 62 CB. And so we can see that the amount is significantly more uh, my initial guess with where the pulse chain sacrifice would go was one to two billion, and now we're over five billion. So let's take a look at how much hex has been sacrificed. So forty-one billion seven hundred fifty-six million eight hundred ninety-six thousand four hundred and sixty-six point three hex have been sacrificed, and let the games begin. You know, just like with. Uh, uh, just like with um, Big Payday, uh, a lot of us, I mean, not necessarily myself because it was like a variable number anyways, but a lot of us weren't sure that that was going to happen. And once it did, it was like, okay, that totally makes sense, right? You want that, uh, you want the the whales to that, that are the biggest and have the most economic mass and energy, you want them to get in and then hold a lot of supply for a large, uh, you know, for a long amount of time because what that does is it pretty much reduces what's available on supply. And uh, someone in the comments was telling me, they were saying like, well, it does matter that whales are in because it dilutes the amount that they have in circulation. And who gives a damn how much is in circulation if it's not being sold, in my opinion? You know, it's just like with the origin address. Oh, with, with Hex, right? That argument could totally be used for Hex where it's like, oh, this, it's all circulating, right? We saw that with the OA, but you know, the, the argument might be that it's going to dump on your head and stuff like this. Like we've all heard in the past, but what the, uh, what the claim was versus what the reality was were two different things. So let's go back and let's take a look at uh, pulsechain.com just for kicks. So we got less than three hours, guys and gals. So we got two hours, 56 minutes. And it's, it's amazing, right? Richard has raised millions. The, the last number that I had seen was $27 million that have been raised for longevity, for medical research, for sends.org. Uh, that's absolutely amazing, right? This is the Richard that I know. Uh, Richard is so inspiring, has, has inspired me uh, in a multitude of ways. And it's, it's cool to see how much um, good in the life and the world that there's been with pulse chain or sorry, not pulse chain, uh, with hex, right? So many unintended, uh, not consequences, but so many unintended benefits. Like, uh, there's people that wanted to kill themselves and now they don't because 
they actually have something to look forward to. And, uh, you know, some people have gotten healthier and stuff like this because they realize, oh, you know, I got 15 year stakes and, and I'm working on that too, because, you know, kind of had like a, a year of like sudden wealth syndrome and just, you know, kind of complacency, but it, it, it keeps you honest. Right. And it makes you realize that, Hey, you know, I set this, stake for myself. I set this goal for myself. I'm going to be a man of my word or a woman of my word and, and sit it through uh, until the stake is ending. So with, when it comes to Pulse, we've got, like I said, about three hours left and hey, it's the final countdown, right? Richard talks about that, that profits, you know, there's no, there shouldn't be any profits, expectation of work from others, you know, stuff like that, right? The the proper term that he uses and but the point is when it comes to pulse there's a lot of people and and i honestly didn't know at first because it's kind of hard to uh kind of toe the same line that richard does and not make any false promises especially as an admin on his channel and stuff like that for pushing at least but yeah for for those points that you got you're definitely getting pulse and it sounds like this is just my own speculation but it sounds like richard has alluded to there being multiple things airdropped more than once. And he's always mentioned that, hey, if this observed sacrifice set was, uh, if someone had wanted to be nice enough, right, to give them free things, then they could. And he always said free things, not just free pulse, you know? So, man, you know, maybe other stuff will come down the line with that information that will be the sacrifice set, which should be public. Uh, so the, the whole point of the story is the, uh, the whales in Hex, the whales in Pulse, you know, all I've seen is benevolence. And you look at Rackham Rochelle, right? Overwatch. He's the, uh, well, he's not going to be the largest whale anymore, but uh, he's definitely up there. He, he got the top spot when it comes to that multiplier on the Pulse chain, uh, the Pulse chain dot XYZ, uh, Pulse lead dot XYZ, I mean, right? Let me let me just go back and he already kind of docks himself, you know. So that's let's uh, let's get to it. So so this these numbers this was just for the the volume phase, right? The, the ranking phase, I guess, is what it says. You can see it ends there, but yeah. So that was still Rack and Rochelle, you know, Overwatch that uh, that secured this top spot. So and and Richard was confused, right? He was confused at what his angle was when he had mentioned that that he docks himself right and uh long story short what i'm what i'm rambling about is whether it's overwatch or richard or other people that are similar to overwatch type of entities we've got whales in in all systems and some systems you've got benevolent like hex and pulse and in other systems you got whales that really play their games and really you know manipulate the the markets and the masses and whatnot and the, the beautiful thing about what I've seen is, like I mentioned, with that supply, if you can have a majority of that supply and the validators be with people that can be trusted and, and have a solid reputation, then everything about the network will be secure. I mean, so Richard's mentioned that um, Pulse Chain is pretty much a lot of the code is similar to Binance Smart Chain, except for that they have 21 validators and we're going to have 33. And so the argument that that there's going to be too much centralization within the validators uh, with stuff like Pulse Chain, with stuff like BSC, with stuff like EOS, like we see that the systems clearly work well. And we're going to see the same transaction throughput that, uh, that they've seen on Binance Smart Chain. So it's really exciting to see how quick everything is growing. Uh, speaking of everything growing, the um, what, what was I going to say? The telegram room of the Pulse Elite. Uh, sorry, of the Pulse Chain Calm. That's now over thirty-five thousand members. Let me let me just take a look real quick here. Uh, let's see, Telegram Pulse Chain. Okay, <laughs> so thirty-five thousand uh, three hundred and seventy members. All right, so that's really cool. It's really exciting, and like I mentioned, I mean, we've all we've all seen the the OGs that held have seen amazing games in, in Hex, and part of that was because we were forced to stake, you know, like I should say when we were staked that we're pretty, you're pretty much forced to commit to what you said you were going to do. Otherwise you're going to pay a severe penalty, especially if it's anything under 50%. And 
And so with Pulse Chain, it's going to be kind of like that same conditioning where even though you can't stake longer for than like a day or something like that, like the staking is not going to be similar to Hex. Um, but even though that's the case, uh, I've learned through Hex that, hey, the, the way that we win and the way that we accrue massive effing wealth is by sitting and holding, you know? Richard mentions uh, founders and, and holders get rich. And, uh, you know, I want to be a Poseidian. So kind of a joke there. But, I mean, seriously, uh, a 1000 bucks at the beginning of Hex on uh, day 33, whew, you, would, you would have multiple millions right now. And so I think about the amount of capital that I've been able to sacrifice for Pulse Chain, and I think, man, you know, I might have had a thousand bucks at the beginning and look at where that's been after 4,000 X. But you know, what if I have a hundred thousand dollars or $150,000 and I put that in a sacrifice, you know, after the points and after the main net, well, if that 150,000 does a, you know, like a 10,000 or 14,000 X like Ethereum's done, holy shnikes, you know? So they're always just like fun mathematical numbers to kind of play around with in your head as far as where the numbers can go. And the answer to that is where have the numbers in the past gone, right? We've seen Bitcoin go 6.5 million X. It's actually more than that because it was under a penny at one point. But we've seen it go 6.5 million X with its dinosaur pet rock technology that it has. And then we've seen Ethereum, like I mentioned, do 14,000 X, something like that. And uh, same thing. It's got a lot of problems. And now we're going to see what Pulse Chain can do and why can't it do everything that Hex has done and everything that Ethereum and Bitcoin have done too. We see the, the hex chart when you overlay it, thanks to Gerardo and Wills only. Uh, when you take it and you overlay it on Bitcoin and Ethereum, we see the hex chart and the t-share chart, you know, mimicking the Bitcoin and Ethereum chart, but at a sharper, at a quicker rate. And so I think we're gonna see the same thing with Pulse Chain. I mean, if uh, viewers and wallets and stuff like that is any sort of metric, we've got over 35,000 in the, in the chat. And then we've got 40,000 wallets that sacrifice. So that's really exciting. And today we obviously have more, you know, so it's pretty much all I wanted to say. I hope, uh, I hope everyone got what they wanted, right? Because when, uh, let me go back here. So when, when Pulse Chain, when Richard first mentioned the sacrifice, uh, initially I was going to do a dollar cost average. And then I ended up blowing my load and like, you know, through like 30% on, on day one, happy that I did now. Because I was at like 15 cents versus where we're at now, which is uh, like 11 cents, 11.8. So really cool to see that uh, whoever the entity is that holds the keys for the OA, uh, whoever, whatever. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, so now we've got, sorry about swearing, but sometimes it just happens. Trying to mimic what Richard's doing. But anyways, we see more money is being sacrificed. So when it comes to making history, we are definitely making history. Uh, EOS had a 351 day launch phase and they had $4 billion raised. That was the largest ICO that we had ever seen at that time. And now this is just one, one address, the EVM address for all the Ethereum, you know, BSC and stuff like that. And we see now, since I refreshed it, another like 3 billion has come in. And so no one knows what is ever going to happen to this money, or I should say this hex. Uh, or the Ethereum or any of that, nor should you care. When you go to McDonald's and you give them a dollar for a hamburger, right? Do you then like interrogate the register person and ask them where that money is going to end up? No, you, you got a product or you got a hamburger in this case. And, uh, you know, there's like the cost versus the value like Richard talks about. So the beautiful thing about crypto and blockchain and all that stuff. Sure, it's public, it's transparent, it's immutable. But, you know, let's not be socialist little bastards and let's not count people's money. So, like, wherever this is going to is what I'm trying to say is, you know, not our business. And uh, if anything, we've seen what the benevolent entity has done in Hex. And so why wouldn't this entity that has the keys to this, why wouldn't it do the same thing? You know, there's never any benefit, as Richard mentions, to... Uh, you know, cut off your nose to spite your face or, or shoot your foot, you know, why would you crash your own project that you're the founder of and that you might be that entity of? It, it just doesn't make sense logically, right? People love to have these parade of imaginary imaginary horribles. Like someone someone on Twitter, they posted, 
yeah, Richard Hart's a scammer. And they posted one of the, the articles, one of the slander articles that like Bitcoin news talk or some, some sort of article. And anyways, I, I take a screenshot of it and then just circle the date. And it was like December 19, 2000, uh, 2009, uh, ni- December 19, 2019. And it's like, dude, this was literally like two weeks after Hex was launched. Look, look at where it's now, you know, it goes to show you the caliber of people that argue even this other guy that was in my chat, you know, in my chat, I just completely removed him. He was complaining that for the work that I do doing clips on my videos, that the five second, it's actually 6.6, but the 6.6 intro, the 6.6 second intro that I have, you know, he's complaining that that's too long and that the outro is too long. It's like, dude, the outro, you don't even have to watch. Like that doesn't benefit you at all. The reason I do an intro is uh, kind of to show the link, you know, if I'm going to put in some of the work, Hey, you know, maybe I'll get a referral and get a couple shekels to, to make it worth that pleb so he can watch more clips because I'm actually motivated. You know, so it's just one of those things that I was like, I responded to him and then I was like, man, you don't even deserve to comment on my channel. Like if you're not happy with it and you want to give this shitty constructive criticism, which is more criticism than constructive, nah, you know, then you lost your opportunity, you know. So for that person and for anyone else. You can always just click the uh, the right arrow on the space bar, and it'll skip five seconds. My intro is only 6.6 seconds long, so you'll have one second of, you know, a chill background and, like, you know, a shot of the uh, referral code. So that's all I wanted to say to that. Let's look at the address one last time because it just jumped in such a large amount. And what do you know? It does it again. I might never end this video if this, if this keeps happening. So now $9 billion worth of hacks have been sacrificed. And, and I am going to end the video here. Uh, I'll probably either upload this as a premiere or just upload this separately and then let everyone watch it. But I hope everyone's had a wonderful night. Hope you got the sacrifice that you wanted. And once again, we're at this. We're still at that ground floor of Hex. We're at the ground floor now of Pulse. And then that Holy Trinity is going to be Hex, P Hex, and Pulse up, up at the top. You know, just that triangle that uh, keeps just generating infinite energy. So that's all I've got for this video. Hope everyone's doing well. One last refresh, $9.363 billion is what we see sacrificed just in the ERC 20s. Most of it is hex. And then there's a lot of Ethereum that was sacrificed that has been moved to other addresses and possibly wallets as well. So thank you everyone. And I'll see you, uh, I'll see you on Thursday for Nights of Crypto. I don't know if Motley's going to be joining us because he's in uh, Santorini. He's in uh, Greece right now. So he's uh, chilling with his girl uh, on that cool island. And, you know, one of these days we'll all have our own islands, right? After another 1,000x worth of gains, stuff like that. So shout out to everyone, and I'll see you on the next time.